Hey everyone. In order to dispel some common beliefs and determine what is the worthwhile and cost-effective items to upgrade on the GM 6.5 liter platform, I'll be doing a few short videos explaining what can and has been done and showing their accompanying dyno graphs to verify if or how the part made any difference to the vehicle. I will be testing turbochargers, intakes, intake manifolds, etc. in upcoming videos. However, we must first begin with a baseline dynograph to kind of show how any item or any upgrade made what kind of difference. The dyno and multiple variables will remain constant as to not skew or bias the results. The truck in question is a 1996 Chevrolet K2500, obviously with the 6.5 liter, also equipped with NV4500, NP241C, and 14 bolt 410 geared rear differential. The dyno results will be collected in Central Texas, thus it is to be expected that it'll be a warm climate and a warm drive to the dynograph location. It also is to be expected that we are close to sea level, so that should keep the results pretty consistent. And the only modification to the truck currently is a four inch straight pipe exhaust from the downpipe back. This four inch straight pipe has one 45 degree bend, which should keep any back pressure down and allow us to have comparable results throughout all of the turbocharger, intake, and other upgrades. This now brings us to our first dyno run, completely stock with four inch exhaust. Here is a short clip showing only six pounds of boost. The results were a bit surprising. I was expecting to see around 150 wheel horsepower based off of the literature searching I did. However, this truck does have four inch exhaust and is extremely healthy. There is no blow by even at wide open throttle. The next test was simple. Remove the panel air filter, see what happens. Interestingly, we lost power probably due to the added heat coming in straight from the engine bay. However, this means that the panel air filter is not a restriction for the factory turbo. Therefore, the K47 airbox upgrade is not worth it until you increase turbocharger size. Now we get to the fun stuff, the manual wastegate. What I have shown here, I made myself. However, you obviously can purchase one from various vendors. The results are quite interesting. What we observe is around 169 to 173 wheel horsepower and around 290 wheel foot pounds of torque. This tells us that as we increase the manual wastegate from six pounds to 12 pounds, the stock rating for the GMX series turbo, we observe no real change in power and thus the only real difference observed in real life is increased throttle response due to the quick action of the spring. Let's go ahead and see the real dyno followed by the video showing the 12 pounds of boost sustained. One last thing I would like to show is the fuel lift pressure of the lift stock lift pump. I average around four to six PSI running, and you can see during this pull, I dropped to all the way down to one PSI, which is very bad and is ultimately starving the injection pump for the much needed fuel to get us up to the bigger power numbers. One final test with the manual wastegate was removing the stock air filter. 
We ran it at 12 pounds, completely stock engine, stock GM 5 series turbo with four inch exhaust and determined we could make 178 wheel horsepower, 302 wheel foot pounds from a 25 year old truck with 233,000 miles. This is great preliminary data. So we can see when we add these new items, add these new turbochargers, add these new parts, what kind of power potential we could possibly see. I'll start adding more videos as I was able to add the parts and get more information. But as for now, this is good results for anyone thinking about possibly purchasing a manual wastegate and trying to decide whether or not they want to keep the factory vacuum actuator. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Have a great day.